Hi everyone, my name's Katie, artist, business coach and founder of Step Up Create. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about daring to speak up. For me, this has been something that I've been doing a lot of recently. You will have noticed that I'm now getting the videos out on a more regular basis. Uh, we started a podcast and the website now has my face all over it. So this, none of this has been kind of um, really, really comfortable for me. It's been pushing myself a little bit further and further each time. And so I've got to thinking a little bit about how this relates to storytelling and how this relates to how some of my students in the beginning find it difficult to share their personal stories. And it's the same thing, right? It's the same idea of raising your voice, of daring to speak up a little bit, taking that courage, showing that vulnerability and going ahead and sharing those stories. So I thought I'd do a quick guide on how I've managed to work with this. I wouldn't say get over it completely, but let's move forward working with this. And it applies to everything from, yeah, just sharing your stories in a group to also, um, you know, getting your personal brand out there all glitzy on YouTube and Facebook and all of this stuff. So. The first thing I would say is um, identify what beliefs you have around this. So if you're thinking, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to do storytelling. I don't want to do storytelling course because I'll have to share my stories. I don't have any stories. Or um, how am I going to be interesting? I'm not a very interesting person. Or you know, what will people think? What will people think is a massive one, right? Or people will think badly of me. They will think I'm being. Um, you know, trying to be a star or trying to put myself forward as better than I really am and all of this. Well, yes, some people will think that, but other people won't. So identifying what those beliefs are and, and really thinking about, are they actually true? Are they things that come from the past that are kind of influencing me? Are they kind of family myths that maybe someone in my family said, you know, you shouldn't stand out, don't show off. It's a big one for me, don't show off. Well, sometimes you have to show off. Don't blow your own horn. Here you have to blow your own horn, okay? So anyway, you, you have to identify these, these limiting beliefs and just identify them. They, you know they're there and sort of put that label on them. They're a limiting belief. Are they gonna go away from one day to the next? No, they're not. They're gonna still be there and you're gonna still think about them when you are creating Hollywood films and you've got amazing people giving you testimonials and you've got a PhD from Harvard. They're still gonna be there, so let's just leave them there, accept them. The next thing that you need to do is start small. So what can you do? What is just a little bit outside of your comfort zone? You're not gonna go from being someone who's introverted, who doesn't like sharing their stories at all, to someone who is telling stories on YouTube or as a podcast with stories on it from one day to the next, but you can make it little by little. So identifying what's the next step for me, what's something that will just take me a little bit out of my comfort zone, that just help me a little bit and go bit by bit. When I started out, um, companies started asking me to do videos and I didn't feel that comfortable about being in front of the video. I studied filmmaking at one point and so I felt pretty happy doing the films, but not so happy being in front of the camera. Uh, and it took me a while to get used to, and it was little by little, doing videos that were private, that went to the companies that didn't go online, and bit by bit get used to doing a video and letting go a little bit about what people think. But it really was little by little, step by step, something that was achievable that is bit by bit taking you outside of your comfort zone. The next thing that has been very useful is developing selective hearing. Anyone with a dog or a child will know exactly what selective hearing is. So uh, a dog who's outside uh, chewing on the ball or whatever, and you say, come in, you've got to come in, we're going out, you've got to come into the house. They're not gonna to listen to that. They, they suddenly can't hear you. Same with a child who say, oh no, it's bedtime. They're still playing with their toys. They suddenly can't hear what you're saying about bedtime. Here, in this case, we suddenly can't hear all of the, or some of the negative comments that we might get. Think about the negative comments from other people as probably projections that they have about themselves that they wouldn't do that. They don't feel comfortable with doing what you're doing and so therefore they are um, making comments and negative comments about what you're doing or they're also just facing resistances around it. So sort of being aware of what those comments are, but at the same time taking that selective hearing approach that a dog or a child would take can be really helpful because people will comment, because you will get um, some 
people who you know, who you care about, who are um, surprised or unhappy with what you are doing or what you're sharing. And this is not so much now talking about sharing stories, it's more about getting out there online or, or whatever else you might be trying to do. So the final thing that's important is to just do it. Now, I know that I've already just said, no, identify your beliefs and um, develop selective hearing and you little by little, you don't need to plan the whole thing. This doesn't have to be something that is hugely structured into the future. The most important thing is taking those steps, doing a little bit each day or each week or each month and moving forward. So what are the four things that you need to do in order to start to raise your voice? First of all, you need to identify a little bit what's holding you back. What are those beliefs that you need to maybe let go of or just park up somewhere so you're not looking at them directly all the time. Secondly, you are going to move forward little by little, push yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone, not kicking yourself to the other side and just having a horrible time because that won't be sustainable. Then you're going to develop selective hearing. So you're going to listen to people, try and take on board feedback, but at the same time, those massively negative comments you might get about, oh, well, she shouldn't be out there. She hasn't got this, she hasn't got that, whatever. Ignore them. Imagine being the dog with the ball or the child with the toys. And finally, you are just going to do it. Start now, get on with it. And little by little, you will be surprised how you become more and more comfortable with whatever you are trying to do, whether that is telling stories, whether that is getting your photo out onto your website or just sharing the work that you are doing. All of that will become more comfortable by doing it. So go and do it. Hi everyone, just a quick thing. I wanted to say that if you're interested in storytelling, do sign up for our free course, which is starting on the 4th of October, five day challenge to find your stories. Super important to know where your stories are, how to explain them, and we'll work on that all together. And that will lead into my powerful storytelling course, which is an eight week course where you can really hone your storytelling skills. So I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Free course is free, no, um, no obligation to stay on for the rest of it, so do sign up, it'll be really useful for you.